Stop! Please! Holy oh, shit. Hey, what's up? This is Community Service with Craig Conan. That's me. Uh, maybe we won't put that part in. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Community Service with Craig Conan. This is my guest, Nick Navecki. Funny motherfucker. Ah, uh, thanks, buddy. Oh, shit. I got my pineapple juice right here. Look at that. Whoo, that's for the UTI, baby. <laughs> put a little cranberry in it. It almost looks like it's just water, and then you put, like, uh, some kind of vitamin thing, like a, like a vitamin C. Like a, like yeah, like emergency. A emergency in there. Umka. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just so you know, world, for the record... Like, if your pee-pee burns, just drink cranberry juice. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. My Nana taught me that. She goes, <laughs> son, look here. Your burn's going to dick. I said that wrong. God damn it. Your dick's going to burn. <laughs> uh, and here's what you do. Cranberry pills and cranberry juice with Trader Joe's sparkling mineral water. 99 cents. It's a good deal. That's what she taught me. Nice. Anyways, I'm weird. What's up, dude? Not much, man. How when are did you? I meet you? I met you at a cue ball show, right? That's and right. we went pissing in the dumpsters. I'll never forget that. That was so <laughs> funny. It was me and him pissing at a gas station. We tried to do the right thing. Oh it my god, closed, we actually right? did. Yeah, it was. We, it was <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's like a yeah. I remember back in the day, we were pissing against the thing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we were driving to Irvine Improv. Yeah, and then uh, it's bumper to bumper traffic. We pull off. We go to a gas station, having to pee pee real fucking bad. And then it's closed. Yeah. And we're like, oh, well, and then we just pissed on the dumpster. And I just <laughs> that's that's the thing, too, for people that are just listening that don't know the geography of L.A. Irvine, or Irvine Improv, uh, it's like an hour away. But in traffic, it's three hours. Uh. And we were drinking like, you know, like idiots. We're drinking all this water. And, and yeah. I mean, we had to pee within the first five minutes of our trip and we're like, <laughs> we're like we get in there it's like i think it was even like daylight and we were just like together like holding hands peeing behind the <laughs> we really were it was daylight that's why i remember i remember laughing while we we're pissing next to each other because we were pissing on the ivy wall next to a dumpster and, <laughs> and we weren't so that cinematic. hidden you know not at all and if anybody drove by they just see us piss it's just it's a funny visual it's a funny goddamn vision. Promoting the comedy show. Hey, Kat, we ha we wrote it on our ass. <laughs> Irvine <laughs> Improv tonight on Four Cheeks. I feel like I've had to take more word. more emergency peas on the way to San Diego than anywhere else <laughs> over the years. I've I'm pissed like, in my cup. Oh, wow. I mean, a cup, my cup. <laughs> what? He I piss in my coffee cup. I use every day. He uses it all the time. Yes. So there's anytime you ride in the car with him and you look at a cup, that's it. I, I riffed about it on stage, too, because I had just done a dodgeball tournament at Anaheim, and I'm an idiot, so I stayed there as to the last second possible for me to make it on time to the show. So I was hosting an uh, early show at the Comedy Store. Mm. So I was like, all right, if I leave at 6, I'll get there by 7. I'm hosting. I'm first. You know, There's a developmental. I have those 7, 10. You know, like crazy. So now I'm driving bumper to bumper traffic anaheim to the comedy store west hollywood and i'm changing in the car because i like there's zero time so zero minutes for air if there's any if there's flat tire i'm fucked if there's an accident i'm fucked going straight there and i have to pee so bad because i was playing dodgeball chugging water and then i just went fuck and i had a cup thank god and i peed in the cup Ugh. and then i filled it up and it started to overflow and <laughs> i went I swear, it went everywhere, everywhere, like on my legs, in the seat, in my underwear. I'm almost like, oh, uh, my God. And I couldn't even stop going. So then I just let my dick spray <laughs> down <laughs> by the brake pedal. Uh, what did you, you do with the cup? Um, I dumped it out the window. Oh. And then uh, <laughs> I did the show. Thank God I pissed on my dodgeball clothes. And I just did the show with no underwear because they were all wet. And uh, I just farted and it smells terrible. <laughs> I'm really sorry, dude. And that's the plot line of Dodgeball 2, directed by Ben Stiller. It's uh, it's you and just a, a giant 
cup of pee. <laughs> <laughs> and then I riffed about it on stage. I was like, I pissed on myself on the way here. But you know how like how that show, they know that it's true and you could do it and it'll get laughs. Mm-hmm. But then you try to do it the next day and uh, it's gone. I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> I feel like that with new bits in general for me. I'm like so excited the first time. I know. I got this and great it story. It kills. And then you do it again. And you do it again. And you're like, what? how did I say it the first time? You know, you it's start. It's fucked. <laughs> it's so fucked. I've done that so many times where I was like, ooh, I got a new something. <laughs> and you're like, eh. See, I, I'm such a germaphobe, though. I feel like if I did that in my car, I would just be like, look, I got to sell the car now. Like, it would be like, that's it. <laughs> oh, I, no, I don't man. want this car anymore. I sit in my piss. <laughs> yeah, you're crazy. It's a battle scar. Every time you go in, you're like, I peed in this. You know, you just, it motivates you. I mean, even though I am, a, I did sit in my own piss and do gross things. I, I am a baby bit of a germaphobe. Like, I wash my hands way too much. I do, too like six to ten times like a lot of times a lot of times he's like i i wash my hand two to three times a day i'm such a germaphobe that's a lot <laughs> no I, six, is it i don't know i pee a lot too so i'm like i feel like not only that but i have also have a dog so i'm every time i take her out to the bathroom i wash my hands just because yeah. i'm like i'm i'm a germaphobe what are you gonna do i wash my hands three times already i didn't do shit <laughs> I made coffee. There Where's my cat? <laughs> he oh, Mike goes in and out, in and out. I have a cat now. He's the best. So this is like right. This is close to the comedy store. Even here. I could walk, could to, the walk to the comedy store, store in like store. fifteen minutes, twelve minutes, something like that. I don't know. Pretty cool. The improv. I could walk there in three minutes. It's so good. Yeah, you're really you're right here in the the heart of comedy. I'm in the thick of it. The thick of it. I love comics it. are in the building. Yeah. I have comics in my building too. Who? Who you got? Ben Morrison's in there. I know Ben Morrison. Yeah. Big tall man. Big tall man. So he's in there and you know, Greg Wilson's comes by a lot. He's good friends with Ben and I know Greg Wilson. He took me to El Paso. Nice. The comic strip. There you go. Good shows. I've never been there. I always hear comics talking about it though. That's kind of like a legendary club that people like You'll just hear like a story randomly. You're like, yeah, we're in El Paso. Okay, so it is. So I only know this because of people who know the history of it. Because the owner's cool as fuck. And he uh, tried to help me out and whatnot. And the club is good. It's just in El Paso. And it's at a strip mall. And it's just, you know, I don't want to be mean, but it's just like El Paso. It's kind of dead, you know. And the previous room... I heard Joey Diaz talking about it. He said that room was like electric, like like Denver Comedy Works electric, you know, oh, wow. and people would talk about it. And then because uh, they, they've been in business many years, I, I don't know, but like at least 20 or long, long time, 20 plus years. And so they moved it. And when they moved it, it kind of, you know, that happens. Hey, guys, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't know the real root reasons, reasons for the move, <laughs> but uh so I don't, you know, maybe... They... I heard it was uh, somebody was peeing in a cup and they oh, were yeah? walking around with it and... Boop, well, I wonder little, uh, how have that yeah. happened. Spill a little something and then boom, they move. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> carpet's got too get, much piss on it. We gotta, gotta get, get closer to the border. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I was making fun of El Paso, but it's it's good. It was good. You know, Friday, Saturday night shows were solid. The other nights, you know, a little empty, but... yeah. But I feel like around the country, though, people usually don't go out during the week. It's not. It's like a New York, L.A. thing where you're like, it's a Tuesday. Why aren't you guys out? Like, it's, a, you know, like people go out on Fridays and Saturdays. It is. It's crazy here. You could just walk by a club on a Tuesday and it's bumping. You're like, go to bed. <laughs> go to bed, you mollies. I feel like Call now, now, you know, I'm 37. So now it's like it's fun to see. Uh, like people, you're about 36. How old are you? 35. 35. Did you say 36? Thir- I, I would, How I, dare I, you? I would have said somewhere. You, you could fool me for anywhere. 33 to 
47. I don't know. 47? <laughs> I'm kidding. I look good. No, man. No, no. You, I mean, you look like you're in your 30s. But when you go to clubs now and you're just passing by and you see people our age and they're like waiting in line, you're like, on a Tuesday? Like, why? What, what's going on with you? Like, Anybody where? waiting in line to yeah. get, go to a club? Go drink Mountain Dew and kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't it, kill yourself. <laughs> it's, it's like kind of just funnier to see older people waiting versus like, you know, you see like a 21 year old out there waiting in line with chicks that does crack me out there's always like it was like one old guy just, recently divorced trying to get just, back in it just waiting in line at the crate like he doesn't even go to the local dive he goes to the fucking the abbey and he's like all right so you do molly right yeah i'll try it fucking actually props to that guy for giving it a go yeah but you don't belong <laughs> Uh, <laughs> go to the golf course and are you a golfer no i used to go with my dad a lot and then he gave up on me <laughs> <laughs> is he like a hardcore golf he golfs a lot yeah, yeah he's pretty good he has like a low handicap i think it was like 10 that's pretty good that is, i don't know what that means so a handicap means uh par is 72 par the pros hit par yeah. and below and so 10 handicap means my dad averaged 10 above par, meaning like 82, 83, 84, whatever. Yeah, that is good. So that's pretty good. I was uh, 36 plus because I think it stops at 36 and they just do a plus because it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. I did break 90 once. I shot an 88. That was the best game of my life. I don't know what happened, but it all clicked and connected. And then the next day, I was like 107. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? That's why golf's so frustrating is because it's 18 holes. So even if you're the man for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them, there's still six you could fuck up on. Yeah. And you always fuck up because <laughs> it's really hard. And like I would like every hole, I would do like something amazing, like a beautiful Tiger Wood shot. And then I would just blade it and it would just go shoom into the water. And you're like, how? what about that last one? You know, <laughs> it's just uh, you change something this much and it'll fuck up, you know? Yeah, I haven't golfed in. I hurt my arm and I haven't golfed since. Yeah, it's too much time. I have like life to live you know it's because 18 holes is like that's like five hours yeah it's like five hours people that get into it though get so hardcore yeah it's a it's an obsession it's a thing but um i forgot one time i hit the ball perfect a drive i don't even remember how many yards i could drive but like i think i could do like 240 that's a good, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I had... I'm just saying, mm -hmm, like I know. <laughs> I don't like, remember. Uh -huh. yeah. I truly don't remember. <laughs> I just remember I had a solid drive. Like people, like you, you weren't overly impressed, but you're like, oh, wow, that's that's when I hit it correctly, of course. <laughs> when it went straight down the... <laughs> when it, and then one time, like I would always go with my dad and then you know how you have to wait for the people in front of you to move. They were so far away. He goes, ah, you're safe to hit it like there's no way you'll go near them and i hit here we go i hit the most nobody dies uh i hit the most perfect hit i've ever hit in my fucking life and it goes over them and it clears them like my dad gave me the green light because he didn't even think i would roll into them and he was just like what the fuck <laughs> like what you your wheaties kid I, like, I don't know and then i i never did it again never not once never <laughs> Cause like let's say I averaged two twenty, like that one was like three twenty. Like I just straight up put, I straight up put a fucking Hulk, Superman extra hundred on it, <laughs> and then never could do it again. And I was just like, what the? Cause I had good form. I have good. I played baseball my whole life, and I have good mechanics and shit. That's like, even though I'm a tiny fucking skinny yeah. guy. It's kind of like one of those stories though, where you see that we you don't really see those movies anymore. But like that like kid story. You know, like the Rudy, but for like Little League, where yeah, we like come hit on, the ball baby, perfect. and like it's like a home run, and the nerdy kid goes out and like you know scores a touchdown. The Little Giants moment, you yeah, know? <laughs> like yeah, no, it was crazy because even like we went up to the dude, the dudes ahead of us, the guys golfing, and we apologized. We're like, sorry, but we never. 
and they even agree they're like how the fuck did you hit it that far like because <laughs> they we said sorry he's never hit that ball that far in his entire ever existence you know and not none of us here have and it was just one one time and then uh it was because i like just in golf like you want to swing like 80 90 percent and that's nearly impossible when you're trying to hit the ball hard because you're just like i want to fucking kill it so I probably swung at like, you know, a nice 82%, just smooth, easy, lackadaisical, and it connected perfectly. Damn. Almost killed four men, and then I never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Shanks. And also, golf's very expensive. It's, so yeah. when he stopped taking me, it's like, well, I'm not going to go pay 150 bucks to fucking hit balls into water. That costs $20 a ball. Like, fuck. It's an expensive. It's a rich man's game. Because it involves a ton of money and a ton of time. And that's what rich men have. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I loved riding a golf cart, smoking a cigar. I feel like... That shit's fun. <laughs> I didn't care that at shit all is fun. about like playing, but I just liked <laughs> being outside and kind of like the smack talk of it. Like, yeah, oh, good, good hit. You know, just <laughs> the actual playing. I was like, eh. But yeah, everything no, you're leading right. up that to golf it was cart, so fun. <laughs> I, I hate cigars. And I remember... My dad doesn't smoke cigars, but what the fuck is it about a golf course, a golf cart, and a cigar? Like, one guy would bring a little pack, like cheap shit, you know, you get at the liquor store, a little five pack. Not Swishers, the ones in the bag that, like, rolls up. Anyways, and then everyone would smoke one, and we're, I was like, why are we doing this, you know? But it's just, it was fun. Yeah. We'd hard-boiled eggs out of a plastic bag. I'm a big cigar smoker, so I love that. I only smoked cigars on the golf course or blunts back in the day. And also, I was never a fan of blunts. I want to taste the weed, not the tobacco paper. Blunts were a beautiful thing if you have two grams and five people that need to huff and puff. <laughs> but if I'm by myself, I'm going to roll a joint, baby. Joints all day. Yeah. You can taste the weed more. <laughs> <laughs> it's that OG Kush, you know, you want to taste it. If it's the Schnickel Fits, then get a blunt wrap, get a flavored one. Oh, I don't want to taste that caca weed. So, did you get that uh, from the same Trader Joe's you worked at? What? That? Uh, oh yeah, I shop still, there. You still go to the same? I got same no spot? bad blood. It, it, the only thing that's annoying is uh, sometimes you just want a grocery shop, and then you have to like catch people up on your whole life and it's like man just follow me on instagram i want to buy turkey motherfucker <laughs> that's it but yeah i love uh most people there for those of you guys that don't know i was actually his boss that fired him at the trader shows <laughs> uh, a bitch. So we've come along and uh but yeah no so it's because it, i'm sure a lot of them followed and loved that you were doing trader joe's jokes oh yeah they all watched it was corporate yeah corporate i bet you even the majority of the people at corporate kind of loved it deep down they're like oh it's hilarious he's doing like a you know joke about our bananas very grateful that they're closed-minded little pussies and couldn't (laughs) see the joy of what i did uh because it was the best thing that happened to me yeah because it just what like lit a fire and pretty much yeah there's a saying i'm gonna fuck it up because i fuck up everything and i probably said it before but i'll say it again it, I heard Tony Robbins say it, but it's not his quote. It's about Columbus, I believe. Even though he was a murderous, rapist, madman, <laughs> he did one thing right. When the Spanish went to take the, uh, I believe, the, the Aztec or, or Mayans or both back, you know, take over the land down, the the numbers of the indigenous people were so great that the, you know, I don't know what it was, a 1,000 versus 10,000 that all the men, Columbus's men, were like, fuck this, we ain't doing this. So he burned the ships, meaning no retreat, no nothing. He's like, we're going to take them or we're going to die. Meaning when you don't have an option, when there's only one choice, it's either sink or swim, do or die, you just do it. Because when there's no day job and no steady income, you just kind of, it, it, it is a real thing. It is like, well... Like, making it isn't a luxury anymore. Like, I have to. Yeah. I have, because I have to make money. And I have, you just treat it more professionally. Mm-hmm. And most people get it. And some uh, producers might not, you know, because they're not there yet. But until you reach that level 
Uh, what do you mean producers don't? Like some people, I'll be like, how much does it pay? Like, oh, it doesn't pay. It's like, oh, no, thank you. And they're like, what? You know? And I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, pay me. Yeah. Pay me. I'm funny. I have a service. You have a show. You're making money off tickets. Give me some of that fucking <laughs> money. I got to eat. Yeah. All right, go ask the other Wahoo. Yeah, that's a weird mentality in L.A. That it's like, well, you just want to do it. You know, it's like, like I'm past that. That's yeah. in the beginning. I mean, there's many, many shows I do unpaid, but it has to be like convenient. You know, uh, if I'm not going to drive to San Diego unpaid. Like, come on, give me 300 bucks. That's a whole day of my life. I can stay in L.A. and make 100. You know? You're getting the economics of Craig right here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that sounds you know, like a that Harvard sounds... Business School. Like, look, when I uh, <laughs> the equation of a hundred versus three hundred is uh, <laughs> gas related. <laughs> it is. It's just a uh, yeah. It's because they don't even realize. Like, because there's so many comics that's, that are just so hungry and that's starving the thing, for though. stage. Time. I feel like because I've been doing comedy for a long time. I started in 2001. The end of 2001. And it's like, there's so many more comics now than there were when I started. I mean, even even when I started, all like the old comics said the same thing. Man, there's so many more now. I feel like there's like a hundred times more. There's comics. so many. The internet and viral videos and stand-up classes and specials, 52 specials a year on Netflix alone. Not even accounting, or more than that actually, because... I forgot about the little, you know, the uh, smaller ones they do. It's insane. It's oversaturation. It's still good time to be in the game. Yeah. But it's it's too much, man. It's overload. Too many options. And you're going to be touring a lot coming up here, right? Uh, yeah. Exciting. Have you announced that and done a lot of stuff? Or I'm building you? my website and my merch store as we speak. And then as soon as... I'm the press release. I'm like, hey, uh, you're here. <laughs> as soon as that's done, we're going to... Yeah. I'm going to push hard, but... That's awesome. It's kind of waiting for all that to be done. Yeah. Well, I think it's better in any ways. Because I feel like... I My mentality is always still that people want to know about stuff like the week before. They or do. like two weeks before. Yeah. I feel like this whole like... I just want to let them know now what's happening in nine months. It's like, I don't really know what's happening in nine I months. I don't know what's happening tomorrow. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't like promoting stuff until literally the week before. Because I feel like... I agree, because people don't make plans until like that. And if you're making plans three weeks out, unless it's a vacation to Hawaii, you're a fuckface that deserves Mountain Dew and a... <laughs> that was dark. That was yeah. dark. That was the callback to my suicide joke earlier. <laughs> Whoa. What was that? I don't know. We might edit that part. <laughs> Just bleep. The, I'll tell you later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the bleeps make it interesting. Oh. Watermark this time set. Did I say any of that right? <laughs> <laughs> watermark. <laughs> ah, fucking watermark. Hey, man. How long have you lived here? In this Six years. Six years. Darkness is upon us. It's awesome here. You get you live in kind of like a fancy uh, neighborhood. Yes, but have you seen my kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> I make fun of my place so much. I truly, truly love it, and I don't want anybody because it's like I am a com. I'm grateful for my apartment and cheap rent and location, but also it is still a very big fundamental problem that I don't have a goddamn <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> Can we respect that? Because I get messages saying like, hey, you got a great thing. Don't, you know, it's like, whatever, <laughs> man. You do your fucking dishes in the tub. See how you, see if you can't. Is there no con- kitchen over there? It's a fake out. It's a fucking closet uh, with the uh, fridge in it. Because I see, I see the fridge. It looks but- like it is a tiny kitchenette. Yeah. But really it's a closet with the fridge and a hot plate and a toaster oven. There's no sink, oven stove yeah that is a that is a fake out that's a fake out everyone you, always goes yeah. oh you have a kitchen and i go look it look. looks like a whole other room like if you were nope. just you could go right that's it it that's, just stops right there it stops <laughs> it stops like our dreams it just goes only so far uh, <laughs> oh. 
Dreams. I can't wait hey, to give but up. But you're from L. <laughs> yeah, you're from L.A. though, right? Speaking of dreams that just keep going, right? The, you're from here. I'm born and raised. So you've seen like people that have been like, I want to be a star from like they were in kindergarten and actually acting in commercials and stuff like that. Or not really. No. Where people There was your... one child kid that was in acting and we tortured him and he dropped out of school. <laughs> You just ruined this kid's life. He was we supposed did. to be like the next we did. Macaulay Culkin. Collective as a group. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we did it. He was cool. He was different. He was on his way to a pension, and you just stopped it. He was in the movie Dennis the Menace. Get out of here. Who was he? <laughs> he was the kid, uh, the friend. This is my buddy. This is my pal. Oh, Remember I, that movie? Yeah, I love that movie. It was Dennis's best friend. Wow. Um, And he went to my elementary school. Your buddy worked and with I didn't Jack leave. Lemon. No, no, Walter, Walter Matthau. Matthau. <laughs> Walter Matthau. <laughs> For a second, oh, I, I was love like, Walter Matthau. I love that guy. And Jack Lemon, odd couple. Yeah. Grumpy old men, grumpy year old men. I love classics. There, Fucking there class. Was, there was something he did where, like, he called his wife, where he's like, "Hey, Wilma," or whatever her name was, and he called her. I I don't know exactly the moment. I'm gonna rewatch it because. I loved a certain Grumpy. thing about I gotta like, rewatch those. About a lantern or something. He's like, Did you move to Lantern? Like it was like a weird thing where he was a he was the best at being upset about little That's mundane so things. Funny. Remember that old uh, the oldest guy in Grumpy Old Man? Oh yeah. The fisherman, the he pops. Was the best. It's colder than a witch's titty out here <laughs> and I'm fresh out of beer. <laughs> that, that. that guy stole the show, man. He, he was, was the best. He was the best. <laughs> I remember seeing that at such a young age with my grandma, and then like that it affected me because they'd be like, "Hey, moron! Hey, dickhead!" Like, <laughs> and then I would say that to people, and like adults are like, "Hey, you can't say that." I'm like, "It's funny on the movie. Like, why can't I say it?" <laughs> That's a movie that is gonna be like relevant forever. Yeah. There's always gonna be an old man and like somebody who's not old. They're being like, "You see, old people are funny," or "Yeah, they were different." So good. Remember Out to Sea too? That was with both of them. No. That was with Walter Matthau, Jack Lemmon. Uh, and uh, they're on uh, like the, a cruise the, ship? The hot one, Diane Cannon. Yeah. She shops at Trader Joe's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ring her up all the time. She's so nice. Who is this? Uh, didn't she, wasn't she married to Peter Fonda, too? That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Who it's, just died, right? Peter? Oh, mm. he did, right? Easy I, Rider. I don't know. What were we talking about before this? Before Jack? Oh, oh the, the torturing of the poor kid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to be clear. It was eight years old, SNL. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. And also, uh, oh, boy. I, oh boy, you, what you got to do the uh, the rebuttals. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, I absolutely did not lead the pack. He wasn't in my class, but I would join in. I'm not going to claim innocence. What does he do I would now? Join the wolves. What, what is this guy doing? <laughs> I have no idea. I knew him when I was. Eight or nine years old. Can we apologize on air hey, right I'm sorry, now? Bud. A... I'm sorry, bud. He, I know you he... dropped out of school and it was... <laughs> I played a small portion role in that. But uh, What if he just like... He's like the number four in the Trump administration right now. And he's like, I credit my role. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Should have made more money and went to private school, <laughs> pussy. This is a public school hour, man. We got pocket knives, bitch. What's where, up? Where was Just this? Kidding. I'm sorry. Torrance. Torrance. I went to uh, the Stub Up Center. What? What's the where the Chargers play? It's in Carson. Oh yeah, it's brand new. I haven't been yet. Is that's awesome. near Torrance? That's yeah, a neighboring city. Yeah, because I used to live in Lawndale. In fact, I think I was living in Lawndale when we did. No, maybe I was already living in Hollywood. When we... I grew up in Torrance. I got family in Londo. Mm -hmm. All my family's all South Bay. San Pedro, Wilmington. Oddly, Torrance. though, like South Bay is kind of crazy because like you're in L.A., you're in the thick of it, but you can also still have people like not jaded by Hollywood. Like, you know, like people are like, wow, you're in the business? Like, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, South Bay is the only like – just like hub where like Hollywood isn't affected it, you know? Yeah. It's just like a, it's middle class, upper middle class. The people know how to turn a wrench and build a home or they're in finance or, you know, or they're realtor. It's just like 
I I want to say there's a lot of real estate. There's like point five percent Hollywood, yeah, workers in South Bay. Just because even though it's like what eighteen miles, it's super close. It's just with the traffic, like nobody that's doing the Hollywood shuffle is making that commute every day. And if you are, I'm sorry. I used to do it, but I didn't. You're crazy. uh, It actually was kind of hard because. At that time, like I was at the comedy store all the time, and this is like the Tommy days where he was like, "Oh, you're past. You're you're gonna be past. And give it a month, you know." It never happened, but I just didn't go in anymore. Like I would be like, "Man, eh, I was traveling a lot," and when I was in town, I was like, "I don't feel like driving an hour." Yeah, you know. And then like all of a sudden, it would be months, and uh, you know, I just wasn't one of those guys that was going. When you live there, you don't go into Hollywood every day. No, that's what. People say like, "Don't you hate traffic?" It's like, no, because I don't. I don't leave a three mile radius. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't my family dinner night, I ain't fucking leaving. And then, like, how many family dinner nights do you have? I just do I one f- Wednesday night, but Sunday sometimes. Because I my feel parents like are divorced. Sunday almost, I do uh, mama. Yeah, I run into you a lot of times where you're like, "Well, I had family dinner night tonight." I'm like, I everyone's jealous of you you know we're all I like, have family and yeah. i love them he has like a family that's like a loving thing he's like i had easter it's like it's not easter like why are you like you have these we like thanksgiving eggs. dinner <laughs> we love hard-boiled eggs we hide them in the bushes even if it's may <laughs> i was trying to think of a month far away from april and that's as far as i got that's as far as... <laughs> oh fuck i need a tune up on my brain yeah I it's, do shit like that all the time. All right, think of a different month. <laughs> think of a May? different month. You couldn't say September? It's, We're in that We're October? I can't believe it. You couldn't it. say October. I cannot believe it. I honestly feel like the summer, like, just, I mean, it, it sounds hacky to say that it flew by, but I legitimately remember being like, well, what are we going to do this summer? My wife, you know, like, in June, hasn't even been the first day of summer yet, and now it's almost November, I feel like. It's crazy. Hey, I know we're going to sound like old people, but time flies. (laughs) (laughs) It really fucking does. It does. Everybody has said that your whole life to you when you're a little kid. You're like, yeah, yeah, out of the way, old fuck. (laughs) And now you're like, it does. I I feel like once I hit 30, it just started to go. Do you say this every summer ever? (laughs) Oh, man, I'm going to go to the beach a lot. I'm going to kayak. I'm going to parasail. I'm going to do this. And then you're just like, it's so far. It's traffic. (laughs) You have a look, too, where you're, like, everyone's favorite friend to go to the beach with. You know I, what I mean? Like, you have, thing. like, the, just, like, oh, he loves going to the beach. I Craig. fucking love the beach. <laughs> I love the beach. But, hey, guess what? Spoiler alert. That ocean water will make your nutsack fucking suck back and shoot out of your bunghole. I went. It is freezing. I went. It is freezing. Sunday, I, I went swimming. Saturday, actually. And was it not freezing? You know what? It was Get cold. Out. It was cold. Get out. I'm just kidding. But it was like that awesome adrenaline uh, where you just go in. And I still just, ever since I was a kid, very nervous about sharks, especially if I'm the only one. I like to swim around other people. So I feel like if, if a shark comes, it's going to help. Week? <laughs> yeah, it does help. It does help. You know what I learned on Shark Week? What? They said, do you know how to reduce your chances of getting attacked by a shark by 50%? What? They said, swim with a friend. Yeah. <laughs> that's was it. I'll never forget ah. that. I just started laughing. <laughs> hey, no, but uh, actually, right now is the warmest the ocean water yeah. has been. It's always like after summer, after the, the fucking, I don't yeah, know it was the nice. science of it. Yeah. Um, also, I think there's like a swell coming up. When there's like El Nino swells, basically warm water from down south pushed up north. Then I could tolerate it. But have you ever been to the water in any tropical place whatsoever? It's fucking warm. Yeah. It's so nice. Here I'm just like Ugh! and I and I and it it actually is I take it back because it is refreshing because you do get that <laughs> that adrenaline and yeah. it's like fun and then you're literally laughing and giggling like a four year old child in the ocean because you just <laughs> fucking balls are shivering off. Yeah. So I do enjoy that, but like I get cold easy, man. I love swimming. I get I love swimming too, but just not when I'm just. <laughs> so I used to surf and I used to have a wetsuit and I used to go at like 5:30 in the morning when conditions are good but I was 
fucking freezing my hands and toes were numb and i was miserable and then at one point i was like why are you doing this to yourself yeah. although catching a wave is one of the greatest joys in this world that was the thing too of on saturday i was the only one not in a wetsuit where you're like going into it like god it's gonna be so cold because everyone else is in a wetsuit so even if it wasn't cold i'd be like because i'm not wearing a suit i'm cold you know i'm yeah. way in it is cold because I went surfing in Hawaii. Didn't need a wetsuit. Didn't need shit. It was fucking bath water. Lukewarm bath water. It was so nice. When did you do that? Shit, I've only been once, and that was like at least seven years ago because I remember I was trying to buy weed off strangers on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody hooked it up. One guy seemed promising. He looked <laughs> like me. He never came back. Didn't answer my calls. The old uh, ask the guy with long hair. I get asked still to this day all the time. <laughs> all the time. I, actually, not all the time since weed is recreational. But uh, just by hanging out at the comedy store, like Australian tourists, be like, you know, like that guy could get us weed. <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, oh, no. Nah. But one time I tried to turn this into a bit and I never was able to. Uh, when I still smoked weed and I was doing improv because I was scared of stand up at the Second City, I was sitting on Hollywood Boulevard eating a watermelon because it was summer and it was hot and we had like a break, like an hour break, and I just was sitting in the shade eating watermelon because this, anyways, the store sold it fresh, like cut, you know? Oh, so good. And this guy comes up and he tries to sell me weed and he goes, hey man. You want to buy some weed? I was like, no, I got some. You know, so I was a stoner then. And then he's like, all right. And then he looks at me and he goes, do you have any heroin? Oh, man. <laughs> I could buy. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, no, man. <laughs> no. And then another time. I, I was, like that. He's like, that I can buy. It was like, uh, as opposed to like, hey, can you just give me heroin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what kind of tester questions are those? <laughs> you want to buy weed? No, nah, I got some. Okay, <laughs> you got any heroin for sale? I guess a guy looking like me eating watermelon sitting on the sidewalk of Hollywood Boulevard is a little suspect. And then the second time, I was walking in a fucking alleyway, and this essay fool comes up to me, and I thought I was going to be like trouble. And he's like, what's up, fool? You, 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 you got mushies? You got some mushies for sale? Mushies. And I said, like, no, but I did. I fucking did. <laughs> and I was just literally like, how the fuck you know I got mushies, dude? <laughs> I guess I fit the profile. I, In hindsight, I kind of wish I took the risk and sold him some, but I was like, you're a stranger. I don't know if you're a cop, if you're going to rob me. He definitely wasn't a cop, but he could have been like maybe an informant like on trial for lesser charges but what the fuck's he going after me for but he just asked he probably, everybody with long hair he's like hey uh do you uh you know who shot kennedy like he just asked well, i live by the project <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh i live by the projects in culver city this was in culver city i can i'm about 99 percent sure i could have sold them shit and it would have just been fine and he would have took it and they would have gave me money and he would have said thank you I like and that, I kind of regret that. I should have just hooked that full up because that's a funnier story. The projects of Culver City. What's up, man? You work for CAA? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I know. Now it's like so fancy. See, uh, Culver City has gotten like. They do. They still have one little hood area. Not even hood, just low income. Uh, by the shit river where the projects are. By the Mexican market. That's where I lived. Shit was awesome. I had a corn guy, tortilla guy. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, those are my favorite. I mean, I, if this neighborhood had a corn guy and a tortilla guy, champurado, fucking, <laughs> oh, tamale guy. What do you guy. mean a corn guy? Like a guy selling corn? Like a guy corn? selling corn out of a shopping cart. It's the best. It's the best. Of like cooked corn or uncooked? Cooked corn. You never lived in the hood? I mean, I have, but uh, not really. They like, slather it with mayonnaise. Different. I didn't grow up around here, so like I would see. So if you live in the hood, uh huh, just like I, the. But that's the thing. I only like going to like I love taco trucks, but anything else, I'm like, nah, I don't want hot dogs. I don't want any of that. Like I'm not. I see it, but I'm not adventurous. Like when I see these kind okay. of just strange things, where I'm like Let's fruit, see. fruit Let's with see. lime. I don't know chili. Yeah, I don't know Let's taco. <laughs> 
Um, well, you just admitted you're a big fat pussy. I am. Because there's nothing greater than a man pushing a shopping cart down the street with a big old boiling pot of hot corn. Hot and, corn. And then he smothers mayonnaise on it Ugh. with cheese and chili and lime. Ugh. It sounds gross, but it's the best fucking snack you ever have in your life. Then there's a tamale guy saying shit, no mayonnaise. And then there's a, See, I, I hate there's mayonnaise. a shaved ice guy. That's the thing that's like right away you're like, and especially hot mayonnaise. <laughs> it's like, I mean, that just sounds like a... a disaster recipe nah, like just gotta it's try a warm it, day this guy's just got like <laughs> i'm gonna sprinkle some mayonnaise on it. it's 105 degrees hey man he's got ice it. underneath it yeah. <laughs> it's food regulated <laughs> i've only gotten food poisoning once Ugh. but that was the danger dogs and i knew it because it was a little cold i was like how old is this one but I, at that time i was drunk and i was like yeah yeah there's nothing better than those Put those danger dogs oh Shit. With the bacon on them, oh, you could just smell fuck. that. Hot dog, hot dog. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. They are so good. Those are so good. Oh, my God. When you see them start to grow and start cooking them fresh, oh, you get them. If you've seen them laid out and yeah. they're turning them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. I'll wait. If, I'll wait for the freshie. If you go to a game and it's the same people and they're outside after, you're like, you know what? You got to hit that on your way in. Yeah. But... <sighs> Dude, because they, they, they grill up jalapenos and onions, and you just go, es todo, and they just do a little squirt of everything. Listen to Craig. Oh, <laughs> breaking into some Spanish. And it's <laughs> fucking so good. So uh, there's actually a gourmet hot dog place called Dirt Dog, and it's from a, a chef guy that grew up in L.A. that loved the danger dogs, dirt dogs, street dogs. I and, love the danger dogs. Yeah, that's what you call them because you never know what you're going to get, you know? Are you going to get hot lava shooting out of both ends? <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, he uh, loved them as a kid. And his family was like, no, don't fucking eat those. And he's like, fuck that. So he basically made a high-end, organic, free-range version of the street dogs. Yeah. It's called Dirt Dog. And I always wanted to go, and I have not gone. I always, It always reminds me of, I went to uh, Tijuana with a bunch of friends. And this one friend was like eating this like just hot dog on the street like late night and he's like oh this is gonna be awesome and he ate it no one else did and like he was like you guys are crazy man i'm (laughs) fine like this is fine to eat like he just kept going on and on about how he wouldn't get sick and it was like uh labor day weekend or some holiday so it was like the next day but the line to get back across the border was so bad and we had been just up partying all night and i think slept for like two hours he bre- he doesn't get sick until we decide to all pay <laughs> to get on this bus because it was like oh if you pay five bucks we could sneak like it was literally like sneaking into the border with like you know because we were riding on a bus but it still took like an hour and a half for two hours the minute we get on this bus you see the sweat just start to pour on this guy's oh, head fuck. forehead. And he just has to <laughs> run to the back of the bathroom. And it's like, I'll never forget the face of like these little old couple of like Mexican grandmother and grandpa. And they're just like, oh, <laughs> and he puked in outside the, back? the door, like right outside the bathroom. And he is just so sick, just blows up this bathroom. Oh, and it's like, <laughs> it just it <laughs> hey. always reminds me of what could happen with a hot dog. Hey, worth it. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> worth it. I'm yeah. lactose intolerant, but I could eat crazy street meat in other countries and corn. Or people are like, you're going to get sick. And I'm like, nah, I'm fine. But a little bit of milk. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I get like. Yeah, just eat a little papaya pineapple enzymes. You'll be all right. Hey, hey, a little salmonella never hurt nobody. Uh, <laughs> lose a, little, a couple pounds. A little, t- <laughs> little tapeworm never hurt anybody. <laughs> hey, take a little off your left foot there. If you haven't had parasites in your poo-poo, you haven't lived. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just kidding. It all goes back to the cranberry juice. <laughs> hey, back to cranberry juice, cranberry pills. Yeah. Papaya pineapple enzymes. You got a little stomach worm? Put some pineapple on it. Feed him. He's hungry. (laughs) Anyhow. How about you shit your pants on the regular, right? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. When's the, when was like your most epic poo poo? -poo? Uh, You know, I've had a bunch of just different like, uh, 
emergencies, I guess, if you will. Uh, like a like like a nice, embarrassing one though. You're on a first date and you just shit the bed, or you yeah. know, like a like a juicy a yeah. juicer. I mean, see, here's the thing: <laughs> lactose intolerant. You know, I'll take a lactate pill, but sometimes it's like the pill's not going to work right. You know, or you'll be like, ah, you'll be confident. I, I had a buddy too that used to always joke about it. He's like, I wish I could have a magic pill because I would literally be like, plan it out. Or I'd be like, I'm going to have pizza and a Snickers. And like, <laughs> I would just throw all the stuff that I couldn't have together. Like, it's a and drug. He's like, like, it's like some kind of thing where he's like, it, 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 anybody would be sick from eating that much like, yeah. milk. So sometimes <laughs> I would just like go so crazy and then be like, oh my God. And it's that like emergency where it's like, I don't care if you're showering or whatever. You got to go, <laughs> you know, it just. Yeah. I, uh, I have a sensitive tummy and I've shit my pants so much. Oh uh, yeah. That's He's the lactose worst. too. He's a Are sensey you? salad. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, it's not like normally it's more of just like, uh, you know, you can maintain it, you know? Well that you didn't, you didn't answer my question. So when did you squirt down your leg, bro? Come on, man. This is the, I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever like, I remember having to on dates and then like just running, but I don't think it's ever like gone you, down. You haven't like, shit in your my pants, pants in the last 10 years? No. I shit myself once uh, in bed. <laughs> well, know? there we go. Like, Let me while hear I that. Was, I was sleeping and like <laughs> I woke up to just like. How the fuck did you do that? One embarrassing like, oh my God. What were I you on? Like, Law did? No. Morphine? I was, I was like so sick. Uh, uh this was like high school i think and i was just in my bed and i it was still in the time with like your parents where i'm like look i just, i'm either gonna throw this away or like you know <laughs> and my Tell mom them. i think yeah. my mom's kind of like handled it but i was so sick i woke up and it's that embarrassing thing where you know you wake up and what you did and you're like i don't even know how i'm gonna like <laughs> what i'm gonna do you know mom, I, gotta, like, I, shit the I don't want to tell anybody what happened <laughs> Because it was that thing where it's like it just happened. It's all like, Bleh! you know. Yeah. No. Uh, That's no turning pretty good. Back. I like that. No. I like back. that. It just shit in your sleep, yeah. and you just woke up with an acidic ass. Yeah. Just you know, sweating. Just burn. You said. Just Why does it smell so bad in here? Oh, you know, you're just like <laughs> mad. <laughs> Why are my eyes burning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anymore. Yeah. But I, it, the other side of it, though, is that I've, you know, as the lactose intolerant, a lot of times, like, you'll get a very confident, like, waiter, and they'll be like, is there uh, any dairy in that? And they go, nah. And it's like, they're just not, you could tell when they say no so immediately on certain <laughs> things where you're like, not only have you not checked, you're actually enjoying the possibility of what may happen to me. You're you know? absolutely like <laughs> enjoying the fact that. There could be heavy whipping cream in it, you know. Uh, like, oh, this will get them. <laughs> this will make them shit the bed again. Oh man! And the wor- the hardest thing about it too, as a little person, uh, not to get into th- that, is like there are certain sinks I just like can't even reach, you know. By like, <laughs> I'll be like in. So I've had like a disaster kind of thing, and then I'm like. All right, I got to all of a sudden become like a MacGyver. I'm taking like a garbage can, I'm flipping it over, try to wash my hands in the correct way, which is on a regular something I'm going to do just you, in general, regardless of like having to blow it up. You guys have a squatty potty I could stand on. <laughs> well, I'll do that. I don't care. Like if I, I kind of look at it sometimes where it's like, look, if you're not going to lower a sink, I'm going to just, I'm flipping this little you know, metal trash can over. <laughs> Fair game. And we're, uh, that's how I'm making this accessible. So I'm standing on that and people will come in, you know, and I'm like washing my hands kind of like inside. Like if, just, you know, I got to like even then dive in depending on how deep certain sinks are. That's so, so funny. A guy walks in. What, like, let's say he's an asshole and he gives you the stink eye. You're like, what do you want to fucking hold me up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck, move along, pisser. Well, it's, it's kind of crazy, too, because there's certain things where it's like, um, you know, now it's kind of like a new fancy thing where you're like, oh, let's throw a sink really high and get these like, really deep sinks that go far in. So, like, uh, you know, if usually for, like, acting gigs, I get to fly first class, you know. And so I'll be in these, like, lounges and I cannot wash my hands. I'm like, I'm so excited. I finally get to fly first class. Yeah. 
and I can't wash my hands. Like, so I'll be like, boom, I'm throwing that trash and that metal trash can over right here, you know? Like, fuck you first. Taking over this lounge. (laughs) Sky lounge. (laughs) Um, yeah, I even hate those because they're deep and you have to lean against them and you always get a wet, wet it's, it's line on your a, shirt. It's such like, a dumb oh. design. Like, who wants, like, who really wants to, like, take advantage of a deep sink? How about, also, too, with all these fucking sensors that work haphazardly. Oh, I hate them. <laughs> but how about you just have the old school push button, but it gives you longer than a nanosecond how <laughs> yeah. about that how about a push button and it, and it gives you 10 seconds like a good a decent amount you know so you only need two pushes max and one push if they're the fucking asshole that likes to waste water it's limited because fuck those automatics oh my yeah. god yeah not only that but like if you're a comic or you work in entertainment you're bound to have like 15 like hacky conversations about this a year with like strangers like in like where you're like ah i wish it would just be a little longer you know you have to have that like awkward thing with like a a clearly (laughs) tourist from another country and like he's doing it and like (laughs) his hands are moving and you're like "Ah," you you try to just it's such a silly thing because i mean i feel like the amount of water that we waste we're still wasting other things like that's it's also water that's going to go back in that will be recycled back in to yeah. clean our own hands. People don't realize that. We're washing and brushing our teeth with recycled municipal water. Meaning, caca, there's fucking shit in your water, everybody. I still do it. Consciously, <laughs> knowingly. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I, I drink only tap water. I don't know about that one there, yeah. sir. <laughs> it's supposed to be good for you. Your teeth. <laughs> Why, because there's fluoride, which is a chemical toxin yeah, that's right but i'm gonna, it's be, a, it's, I'm gonna it, be dead in two years so the craig's gonna be like see i only drink tap water and cranberry juice nah it just makes you depressed fluoride is a, i believe it's a it's a it's a waste product of aluminum hmm. the manufacturing of aluminum causes you know when you create something there's like trash well, fluoride is like a byproduct of that, and they didn't know what to do with it, and they like put it in the water and the toothpaste. Doctor Craig, <laughs> you, can wash Google, it. you can Google it. Wash Google. it with Doctor Craig. One and two. Say how is it also occurs naturally, and I, I believe in certain shit, but then we made it unnaturally. Yeah. Well, then put it in everything. Although it's still like, you know, you'll go to certain countries and they're like, the water here is like just as good. And I'll be like, oh, all right, fine. I can drink it. You know, they'll say certain countries. It's fine. It is not as good in Mexico. Do not drink yeah. the water in Mexico. Yeah, I don't think I'm I'm down for that. I drank it as a kid and I got the Montezumas. Did you? Yes. And, and your was, mom is Mexican? Yes, but she told me not to drink it, but I didn't listen. Is she like from Mexico or like her? Oh, she's uh, grandparents. First generation. Ah, born here. Parents were from Chihuahua, Mexico. Chihuahua. I'm where? Second. Where is that? I don't know. I probably should. It's in Mexico, bro. Have you been there? No. <laughs> I like how you're like your eyes go up. You're like maybe. No, I was not there. I uh, Acapulco. Maybe. What's it say? Fluoride was a byproduct of fertilizer creation fertilizer all right and, i knew it was something shitty and yeah and it just happened <laughs> to coincide with dentists finding out that it reduced cavities so then they put it in the water mm. yuck mm. yeah fertilizer byproducts so that toothpaste literally comes from shit but let me tell you how strong my teeth <laughs> you're are you're welcome motherfuckers yeah. It's also, I think it was classified. I used to watch the Science Channel a lot, but also I forget a lot of shit. <laughs> it was classified as a like toxin, like a poison. Ooh. Yeah, you can't have too much of it. Yeah, if you have too much fluoride, like you'll die. But yet, it's okay to be in our water and our toothpaste. And I feel like so I don't pay attention funny. to chemicals. It sounds all. funny to me. Yeah. Hey, this chemical that might kill you in small doses is it's okay. <laughs> So eat it up, kids. Eat it up. But it's don't all, eat too much because you're going to die. <laughs> it's all conspiracy. You know, I mean, I they, they say the same thing about vitamin C. That's bad for you? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I was I'm like, like, that doesn't sound, <laughs> that doesn't sound right I'm at lying. all. I'm like, yeah, a lot of people say you could die from that. <laughs> what about that recent one? Zantac? Was it Zantac? No. 
zinc? No, it was one of those heartburn medicine. It like uh, they did an FDA recall and it's been causing people cancer. Wow. I was like, good thing it's been in circulation for 25 years. Well, they finally <laughs> got the oxycotton uh, family there. You know that they whole do? thing. Yeah, do you see that? No. So the makers of oxycotton, they're like they were hit with like a billion dollar lawsuit. Yeah, because they're giving kids heroin. Yeah, because yeah. it's like all these families and stuff from Ohio were like, "Yeah, you're basically killing our family." Yeah. So they they just kind of came out and uh, filed a crazy lawsuit. I talk about drugs a lot on this podcast, but for those of you that don't know and didn't listen to past episodes, oxycotton is synthetic heroin, mm. government made, mass produced pill form, put in little pills, and it has been approved and given to children. Jeez. I mean, smaller dosages, of course, because they're ninos. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it gets you hooked, and then it's insanely expensive and hard to get. So then a lot of people just turn to heroin because it's easier to get and cheaper and stronger. Mm. And uh, it's an epidemic. Man. And so on a light me. note. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> on a light note, he does a. Let's talk about positive stuff here. Yeah. We went on a dark yeah. rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. uh, How about the Dodger? Hey. <laughs> no, let's talk about your foundation. You oh, do dope yeah. shit. You yeah, do good thanks, shit. Thanks, man. Thanks. He does a film challenge for yeah. disabled persons. Yeah, yeah. So I started this disability film challenge, uh, which is the weekend film competition. Where over the course of a weekend, participants write, shoot, edit, submit a three to five minute film that has somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. Uh, we partnered with Easter Sales Southern California three and a half years ago. So now we're the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, and it's awesome, man. We've seen so many great films come out of it. Uh, comics have kind of embraced it, too, so you'll see kind of random comics that are in films where I'm like, how did he get in there? Yeah. She's in this, you know, and and uh, it's cool. We've seen a lot of um, awesome films come from it. There you go. So donate, check it out. Donate, check it out. Donate, check and, it out. And, and, go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. Check the films out. Hopefully Craig can be in a film someday, man. We can maybe shoot it, take place in uh, Trader Joe's, maybe figure out how to, <laughs> They won't you know, let me yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I told you uh, for a while, I was like, you need to film the whole, like a sketch to try to make it look real. Like you getting fired. I know. I, you did. And I wrote that down and I'm an asshole and I haven't done it yet. And I absolutely should and need to make a sketch of me getting fired. Can we, uh, any fans of this podcast, can you start like help make that happen? You know, put that together, get, get this together, throw a little money together. So Craig could do I already know who I want to film. It. I want Brett Banta to film it. That fucking weirdo. And who, and do you need resources? Do you need other actors in it? You need somebody to kick some, some donate for this short or what? Come uh, on, throw some money no, here. If you want to get in, no, you want to be an I'll EP, Craig's going to be, yeah. No, it's, they do it's enough. It's a competition. They do enough. Outbid. Just go to my uh, shows. Go to his shows. And uh, buy my merch. <laughs> 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 I will get this done, I promise. You're good, though, at uh, selling merch and talking to people after shows. Yeah, you got to shake like, the hands of the people. Promoting the podcast. I'm a man and, of their, their, I am, they... <laughs> I got nothing without you guys, you know? So fucking be kind to your fans. I never understood yeah. the performers that treat their fans like shit. It's like, they pay the bills, asshole. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a kind of a weird thing where you you see people that are like, I don't want to go out there and talk to them. You're like, well. They're what? fans. <laughs> yeah. They want, they, you made them laugh. They're, they like you. Now go shake their hand and hand them a fucking sticker. Yeah. I, I got stickers made. I love those stickers. Thanks. They're great. Like, Post them anywhere. Yeah, and I always tell them the same shit. It's a it's a little joke, but it's funny and true. It's like, hey, don't throw this away. If you're gonna throw it away, at least go graffiti it on a wall somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And it always gets a chuckle, and I mean it. I mean it with all my heart. I'm like, if you're gonna throw this away, you better go put it on a stop sign, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you better go graffiti the city. Tag yes. Tag it up. Tag it. How many do you get stickers? I buy them a thousand at a time, but I might buy, start buying them more in bulk. But it's just you know, I'm a I'm on a. I'm on a budget, man. Like everything's, you know, I'm doing very well, but it's just like. Where do I, you find gotta, stickers to get them? What do you mean? He uh, There's like a Amazon thing or something. You just order them online. I just go to Uprinting. You should sponsor me. Podcast. <laughs> Uprinting. Um, but there's a, you just Google anything. Uh, this one was conveniently located near me and 
save money for pickup so they don't have to ship it to your house, which is expensive. But I'm sure there's, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of choices. And it was so simple. You just upload the image, choose the size you want, and quantity and quality. That's that. That's awesome. If I could fucking do it, you can do it. If I can, you can. Um, But Dean Del Rey actually uh, just sent me his sticker guy, and he's like, try my guy out. So I'm going to give him a shot. And he, he's got stickers too? Oh, Dean's been doing the sticker game for seven, eight, nine years. I don't know, a long time. Yeah. I uh, I wish I took a note sooner because there's something about a sticker that's nostalgic. Like people don't want to throw it away. Or if they are, they're gonna they might do what I tell them to do or well, they already had that plan, they might go put it on a light post, you know, just it, for fun. And does and this sh- or a Wahoo's fish tacos or something. Yeah. <laughs> does the sticker promote the podcast or Yeah, it just says community service with Craig Conant. So it has my name on it and my podcast. And it's my podcast logo, but it, it's my face, so it's it's double double dip. Double Promotes dip. the podcast and my my likeness because people they'll see you even if you kill it and you did have the best set you've ever had in your whole entire life they'll go what was his name again <laughs> and it's no shot against your ego <laughs> it's just like they saw seven to ten comics that night you're well, a blur you that, know that's the funniest thing about uh i did uh, uh comedy magic they have like those uh, birthday shows yeah which are the best they're so fun and they had a really good set um whenever it was two months ago and after my show i'm in a gas station not that far away and this lady comes up to me and she was like oh my god i loved you you were like the my favorite like she's like going on and on i'm like oh thanks so much she's like i mean some of these people though she was like i just didn't like this one joke that somebody had and like it was like something and it was my joke (laughs) (laughs) but it was like it was something related about how like women like you it's easier to just like agree with them yeah. You know, and he and she was like, I hate when like men are like, we just have to agree with women. Like, but she was like, I loved and she called out another joke of mine, but said about she hated this one guy that had this joke. And I was like, that's my joke. <laughs> Did you tell her? No, because uh, I was laughing so hard. And I was like, I, you know, what's the benefit for me to be like, oh, I know, by I, the way, I, I know. used to like correct people. And now I just like, yeah, it's, ah, it's not even worth it. It doesn't matter because they're like, literally, I'm like, you, this show had not ended a half hour ago. <laughs> you come up to me about how great I am. She even like, she wanted links to me. She wanted all this stuff. And then she also at the end quoted about like putting down other comics and <laughs> including me. I was like, that's so great. She put down all the comics? No. She just said, like, uh, she didn't like one specific comic. Gotcha. And then she said, and this other comic did this joke, and that was my joke. But she liked, you know, she did call out a joke she liked of mine and said she how much she loved me. That's how it all started. And I get all flattered. And then she starts talking about this other comic she doesn't like on the show, who I clearly know who she's talking about. And then, like, talks about a joke she didn't like of mine, being like, and this other comic does this joke, and it's my joke. <laughs> and this other piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> when she uh, was slamming other comics, what do you do? Do you do you say, like, oh, no, comedy's subjective. He's just not for you. No, I think that, you know. I mean, I'm not going to do. do, you, do what do you, I usually say, yeah, that guy's awful. <laughs> no. He's I, the worst. See, I'm not. <laughs> there are so many comics that trash other comics. I'll never say anything about another comic because I'm like, look, first of all, I'm not going to say I'm the greatest ever. You know what I mean? I, I Some people, I'm sure, don't like me, you know, so not true it's the uh the other side of it and then but it is subjective but i'm not gonna like it's not my place to tell people that so whenever people are like crapping on people i just let it roll off you know but in the same way i'm like that with people i'm not gonna debate or be like no 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 you don't understand why that person it's like that's not my job okay like if they like if they are into this or not it was a good bit yeah about termites i yeah. Termites. Why did I choose that? <laughs> Termites. It was a good Luber joke. Yeah. Stuber. I feel like now, though, it's it's such a divisive time with Twitter and stuff with, like, people that are like, oh, they're so, like, unpolitically correct or politically correct. I was just saying this to somebody else that I feel like in general the way that the comedy game actually works is everyone, like, is just, like, having a drink or hanging out or just, like, BSing. There's no, like, crazy, bitter back and forth. It's all just for Twitter. 
that people are like mad or like attacking other comics. Yeah, like, I would agree with When that. you're just hanging out, like no one's like, you're not seeing these crazy wars where you're like, oh, you don't like women, you know? It's no, like, it's all on it's, the internet. It's all on the internet and then you hang out and everybody's like, Everyone's oh, what's cool. up? Like, How you ah, doing, he's Steve? All right. Yes. He's got a Twitter beef. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's for other people to weigh in. Yeah. Like the SNL thing, you know, obviously like you saw that everywhere, but I feel like I saw, you know, people that I saw attacking online. I've seen them all interact in the. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Also, too, it's like that is unfortunate. But just why join in on that online? Yeah, I, I just. Debacle. I, I like to. I've been called out as saying that I'm very much Switzerland, you know, just in general. <laughs> Like, uh, I understand know. both sides of it. I just hate that. No, I, I'm, I'm not saying about that, that I didn't call the Switzerland. I'm just saying in general, everything, oh, oh, like yeah. friends and like, especially like I, uh, doing tours with comics, you know, I'm just, I don't like to get in the middle of like mundane, stupid things. You know what I mean? So I'm always just like, you know, I'm, I just don't pick sides because to me, I'm also like, that's just the way I grew up where I was like, ah, I like to just be friends with everybody. I don't like these, like, because I remember that, like, high school kind of, like, you're either friends with Jimmy or you're friends with Steve, you know? Like, <laughs> and it's like, I feel like that sometimes. Like, I like comedy. Jimmy and Steve. Yeah. Like, this what's the bullshit. point? Yeah. I, uh, I'm pretty neutral, too. If I hate a guy, it's usually the guy that everybody hates, too. It's not, it's like, you, could, you gotta be a fucking trash monster, you know? Just, like, where you're like, you're garbage human <laughs> being sir but i feel like now people are you know the in general that that people are almost getting a platform for weighing into controversy not just with comics but with other stuff like that's how they're building twitter followers and you see a lot of news articles that are not really always related to positive things people are doing but they're more like attack because that's what sells you know media so just to me in general, I mean, as a rule of thumb, I just don't really like to get involved in like jumping on the bandwagon unless it's something I'm wildly passionate about. Um, but even even in like uh, the disability thing, people always want me to weigh in to attack like, hey, uh, this terrible thing happened. And I'm like, look, I, I'm more about like how do we create content? I'm not about like, uh, you know, attacking others, really. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's a shitty existence. It's like World Star, TMZ. It's like, sure, you're successful, but nobody respects you and you're garbage. You know? You're <laughs> World Star! World Star! Let's film this old lady getting punched in the face! You're like, <laughs> uh, how about you help her out? <laughs> no. Instead of film and yell World Star. That's the funniest thing about it. It's like, it, it's like I, I remember, it's not so much anymore, but like, I feel like people that would be able to have a tagline, like a comic, would be like so huge because they would have a tagline. Yeah. Like Bernie Mac was the like the best at it. Like he his taglines were so great. He's but the, like he was the best. There man. would be other people like uh, that would try to like get these taglines. But World Star was like, hey, we could do that. Hey, we could be like the website that has a tagline, and they were like, yeah, World Star, and it like everybody was calling that out. They're just vile. TMZ. Yeah. Let let. World, let's make a uh, business and millions off of other people's misfortunes and yeah. tragedies and shit they don't want. Yeah, coming out. It's just like scuzzlebutt scum shit, you know. How about you elevate a person? Are you a UFC fan? Like fighting? I used to watch all that shit when I had cable and like Pride, the old school Pride fighting, and UFC. But but uh, I w used to watch Fedor Emelianenko. And Vanderson Silva and all those dudes fighting Pride in Japan. And then UFC bought Pride up. And then I just kind of fell out. Pride was crazy. They, like, allowed knees to the f knees and stomping and head oh, wow. kicks while they're down. Like, it was it was street fighting. It was uh, it was insane. And... Uh, Did you see that Logan Paul is going to fight? Who? Uh, somebody else, like, from the UFC. <laughs> Can he fight? I just saw something about it online. Well, I mean, I, I still don't know if it's like spam, and I don't even really know who he is. And I just know he's like a famous person for, I don't even know what he's famous for, honestly. Just I didn't know about him until him and Chris got in a little baby Twitter beef. Oh, they did? Well, Logan, I don't even remember. They're just roasting each other. It wasn't serious. 
Oh, he was uh, he was roasting Chris. And then, and then obviously, Chris, yeah, Chris. And Chris uh, was like, "Yeah, I'm a comedian that's hit, respected." And, <laughs> yeah, obviously bit back, and it was uh, a much better, uh, yeah, well crafted joke, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's like, "I got YouTube fans that are 12." <laughs> I don't know. I don't even remember, but that's how I learned. I want to look him. this up. It was a couple years ago, and, and they're like chill now. I think it's like I don't even I don't even know enough information to speak about it to be honest, but. He, he came to a little people convention. He did? So he's got like a little person that he basically does like bits where he's like, I'm going to put you in the, you know, I don't know. They, they do stuff that's like not of my, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's like, uh, you know, there's a fan base for that and yeah. uh, they do, you know, stuff. And uh, he, he came to a little person convention and it's crazy. I mean, little people love him, you know, and. And uh, there were people that, because sometimes that could be very sensitive when you're like trying to do bits, and like our community could be like, "What are you doing? What are you here for?" But like people, like little little kids, like love this guy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, his yeah, whole like, fan base like is kids. Eight or like eight yeah. year olds <laughs> and like eight to twelve year olds were like, "Oh my god, it's <laughs> Logan, well, Paul." And I'm, meanwhile, I'm like, because I've been like in the entertainment for a long time, and you know, I've been on a lot of TV shows and all these things, and I'm like. I don't really respect this guy, you know, d deep down. I'm like saying in my head, but I'm also like the other side of it is like, I'm a dinosaur and this guy's got like people that he, like, yeah, he, he I, has fan, like fans that care about. Him. I don't so get who am it I to say, or understand like, it. Yeah. But the fact is like, he's a genius at YouTubing because yeah. he has 50 million subscribers and makes millions of dollars off these kids. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you know, comics are, actors you know you don't hear bill burr or de niro going you seen this kid <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah uh but he's still very very successful at it so yeah you got to give him that but i like, mean that's most of his content makes me want to stab my eyeballs out yeah. and vomit i mean it's on not my dick hole it's not for me <laughs> but i would say very few like oh that's a much better way to say what i just said yeah <laughs> it's but, not for me I, I mean, I would say Switzerland. I would say very few things. I mean, I just kind of like <laughs> crapped on him like right before, you know, where I was like, I hate this guy. What an idiot, you know, but I, all those people, I'm like, I, I feel that I am starting to get old in terms of content, content that people like, like that are like kids like for a lot of these like Instagrammers or YouTubers. I'm like, I don't even remotely find this amusing. Like, I don't get it. You know, with certain I, things, I don't either. Man. But it's it's, it's undeniable insane. if so many people like it. It's nah, there's got to be a certain place. Because most of the people are stupid as fuck. Yeah. No. But yeah, it's sad. That's true. <laughs> but still, but like, there, if you if see what's going like when you see like the what, like I'll see like YouTube stars and uh, in Instagram stars with like those sketches, and there's people that are good at it. Like Trevor Wallace, that fool's. I laugh at his shit all the time. And uh, that kid, Ryan O'Flanagan, that went on Hollywood Boulevard and went viral, I thought that was the funniest shit what ever. What did he do? I don't even remember, but it was just awesome. And I was dying. I was laughing. These guys are great at it. But then there's this other, like, tier that are not maybe not as equally successful as those dudes, but, like, pretty fucking successful. And it is the worst sketches I've ever seen with terrible acting. There's no jokes. And it doesn't even make sense. And it'll have a half a million views. And I'm just like, what the fuck? See, like, it's, a, it's a different time, though, than when I started or even really 10 years ago. Yeah. Now it's like you, you still even 10 years ago had to go through like if you want to be a comic, you still got to like get past here. You still have to like, you know, go. No, open now you for don't somebody. need shit. Now it's like, you know, we were, we were both at Kill Tony last night. It's like if you're great, like, you know, you could do a minute or whatever. And, like, some of these people were so funny at, like, these little side roasts. Yeah. Where I was like, man, this guy could be a star just from yeah, that little, like, thing. He'll and blow hilarious. up from it and get shit. He, yeah. he, like, that one guy, the last guy. Was, David Lucas, yeah. He was hilarious, man. Yeah, he I was, was like, I was like, we were both laughing really hard. I mean, he, oh, he was, he was, he was like, that guy was hilarious. Because uh, Kill Tony's podcast at the end, I mean, at they do let open mic anybody does one minute but then at the end of it they have two regulars that do a minute and willie montgomery is one and david lucas is the new one and they both are so fucking funny and uh david lucas does his minute and kills and then he 
turns around to the panel and then he just starts roasting the panel yeah this is the the new booty roasting the established season successful veterans and it is so funny and you got nothing to lose too and it's he's like the just best bear, bear, and he made fun of michael bisping so oh, bad yeah, that michael's him. bisping that's his name right I got so. really upset <laughs> Yeah, and like call him a fat motherfucker. I'll fuck you up. Like basically said, I'll fight you. Yeah, which is you're a fighter. Yeah, you- <laughs> and then Dave was like, all right, I'll fucking shoot you. And then it, it was it just got weird. Yeah, it was, yeah. it, but it was awesome because I was like, fuck yeah. That Everybody was rooting destroyed- for David Lucas. They're like, he fuck you, Bisping. It. Yeah, fuck you, dude. And if he does shoot you, we'll lie on the courtroom <laughs> and we'll say he didn't do it because you're a fucking big buff man making fun of a fat man. Real original. Saying you'll fuck him up. Anyways, but David Lucas killed him with his words. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. But and when it got real, the whole audience turned on Bisping. You heard yeah, that shit? Yeah. They're like, it got really kind of crazy. Yeah, it I did. mean, it's nutty, though. Like, those new kind of forums, though, and then, where you could do that, you yeah. know, and like. Tony was like trying to come, okay, all <laughs> right, guys. And then David just lit up Tony. He's like, fuck you, looking like a little hand puppet. Yeah. Bitch, or whatever the fuck yeah. he said to him. It was awesome. It was really funny. That he was said, a you fun look time. like the bad dolls in Toy Story 4. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was that and he was a, does. That was That's a good why time. Hit so hard. Yeah, that was a good time. I think we're wrapping it up here. Anything else? Nah, man, this is fun. Thanks for uh, thank having you me, so much for doing it. Having me come out here, Nick Novicki, very very funny. Follow me online at Nick Novicki. Oh, oh, it's Novicki. I yeah. do everybody's <laughs> yeah. name wrong. Yeah. Fuck. I kind of like the little. He threw a little like torrent slang on it. <laughs> Nick Novicki, 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 Novicki. He's funny. You've been in like <laughs> I didn't even touch this topic. How many goddamn movies and TV shows you've been in? You've been in Boardwalk Empire, right? Yeah, I was in Boardwalk Empire. And, uh, bench I've been in like over forty, not bench warmers. But I was in. Uh, but oh, I'll shit. take that credit was for it. That, that was, was another racist. little person. Uh, but I'm glad you liked my work, just like that lady that, that from it. He lived. It was it was Craig's mom that saw me at the Comedy Magic Club, and she uh, was like, you know, I'm a big fan, except that one joke. Uh, <laughs> oh my bad. No, so I but, just know you've been in 50 million yeah, things. I have been. I've been lucky. I've been in a lot of stuff. But um, I'm sorry. Nah, man. But I'm also still like a chameleon, you yeah. know, where I could be do something and then people are like, hey, what's your name? Like, are you what do you do? And I'm like, yeah, oh, I was wait. just in that movie you saw. I don't want to end it yet. Oh, we did an hour and a half. I forgot to touch this topic, too. You said you started stand up in Philly in all black rooms, right? Yeah, yeah. And didn't you say like your second show? You told me this epic story where you brought a date or something, and you thought you're oh all my hot God. shit. Yeah, <laughs> tell that story, <laughs> and you just bombed. Ah, this is great. So yeah, I'm like a month into doing stand up, and I am killing. The first time I ever do it, you know, my act was all about. I I use like Rodney Dangerfield as like a thing where he's like Rodney says he gets no respect. I get no respect, and I'm like doing like a Rodney thing. But it was all about a true story about this girl that like came to visit me. This little person girl, and she kind of like totally blew me off, like trying to hook up other dudes. And I'm like, I just went into like vivid details about everything and all these kind of things. How I get disrespected. And it was ripping. It was ripping. And so I start getting all these paid gigs from the first time. God damn. Because um, but <laughs> that's Philly's, a good first time. I know Philly's different though. Like when I when I years into doing stand up, like I did stand up three and a half years before I moved out of Philly. I got paid more than I did the first, like, you know, the next, like, five years in New York and L.A. Yeah, that's it. Because, like, you know, you get paid. That's how it is, yeah. It's like, you know. Because the talent pool is so much smaller in Philly, so anytime there's any talent, they're like, ooh, pay this guy and develop him. We need him. You know, it's an investment, really. Well, just also, there wasn't, like, thousands of comics. Yeah. So, like, once you get to a certain point, you, you get paid for everything. Yeah. So, but anyways, I'm doing these clubs, and I was doing, like, 500, you know, like big venues yeah uh, like being the only white guy and i'll come out there and you know and i would i was i was killing it but i got real cocky and so i was like look i'm i'm the, i'm the man and i'm from new haven connecticut which is like uh i grew up in the like outskirts but new haven is like a very predominantly black city uh and so this show was like really packed and I'm like, I'm going home. I'm coming home to New Haven. And I'm going to kill it. And I just started dating this girl who is from, like, upstate Connecticut in this little farm town. 
and she was like the whitest girl like in the world and i'm like i'm gonna bring her and she's like my sister's coming too she doesn't tell her sister i'm a little person and and i don't tell her that they're going to be the only two white people (laughs) out of like 500 people in this like little establishment and i go in there and i am so cocky i'm like look i am just gonna murder i'm killing i'm getting paid you know and i'm like two months into comedy and i go up and (laughs) immediately i get heckled like as on my way up these like you know like really sassy black women are just kind of talking really they heckle they well (laughs) it starts it starts with like they're like uh they're talking about they're just like talking amongst each other like they're happy to see each other i want to make it a a statement real quick not only will sassy black women heckle you (laughs) but they will be 50 times funnier than you (laughs) too and you're like oh come on Uh, you're not trying well that's that's a hundred percent statement but that's not even where we go here in this thing so they're just kind of talking and i get up there and i'm like so confident i'm like man i got this i'm like i think i'm wearing like a sweatsuit like a velour like this is like early 2000s like i'm like i'm dressed like 50 cent for no reason you know <laughs> i'm yeah. like up there and i'm just like i'm gonna kill it <laughs> you know i'm like oh yeah you don't understand i'm i'm gonna you're, hit him with you are wearing a fucking do-rag yeah. 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 yeah everything but the do-rag literally i think i had like a fubu uh like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm up there and I'm like, I am gonna kill it. But these girls are, these ladies, I mean, not girls, they were like probably in their 40s and they are like talking and just like, hey, how you doing, Donna? What's up? You know, they're just going talking. And I get up there and I start kind of heckling them a little bit. And then, you know, and I just going back to my material, but I'm so new. I'm like, I don't really address what's happening that the people in the front row are talking very loud. And then it, it gets me mad. And I'm just now I'm like offended, you know, and I'm like, but you guys just don't understand. That's probably why you don't think I'm funny because you don't understand. And all of a sudden it comes across that I'm being very racist. And it's like 400 people just go from like not liking me for the first 30 seconds to all of a sudden zeroing in being like this guy's a racist or like there's something that he the way he says you don't understand came off really bad it wasn't like i didn't say it like you don't understand and here's the joke it was just like you don't understand and i'm i just came across you probably said you people don't understand no i didn't even say you people (laughs) yeah i I was there but it (laughs) it came across that way like big time gotcha so it goes from them just talking and she goes oh this guy sucks like and all of a sudden i heard like it started with like one person kind of booing a little bit like get these <laughs> golf stage boo. boo and then i'm like yeah but anyways i just i, I pretend it's not happening because i still I, this girl that i'm just dating who brings this other girl and i tell her that i'm gonna kill and the booze start getting like more and more <laughs> and all of a sudden we got now hundreds of people booing me and i'm still like <laughs> i'm still like thinking that i'm gonna get them i'm like no but yeah, like anyways but wait, what up, is like, the deal like, with anyways, the subway yeah so seriously like i'm dating a girl and then and i'm like going into these like bits where it's like and now I'm going into like story bits while people are booing me and then the host is literally now trying to bring me off stage he's dragging me off I still have the microphone I'm like but anyways like dating when you're little when you're a little person dating isn't it's anyways like anyone else from here and then holy shit and and then these girls like I'm I just like I told her I'm gonna be the next Chris Rock you know and (laughs) It was like one of those. She said, "You're gonna be the next, yeah. Chris. Stop." Yeah. So, <laughs> so they they were just like, "Yeah, we gotta go." And so it was like one of those like sad things where I'm just sitting in the back of the room and everybody's like, "You gotta learn how to like handle yourself." You know, I, so like a lot of pep talks from random people where they're like, "You need to learn how to change that room." And I'm like, "I know." I'm like all like emotional and sad. You got booed off stage I got booed in off. your hometown in, in hometown. front of your girl and her family. <laughs> That's what's up yeah that's fantastic yeah and you know what it's it's great i think more people should be booed off i think there are times where it's like it's such a great thing i mean it it felt so bad it was such a terrible i've thing. never been booed off yet <laughs> but i have had <laughs> daggers to the soul yeah but from like crazy I mean, heckles like i i've really bombed before um you know, I, I I don't really bomb a lot because, like, I'll be like, you know, 
I mean, I bomb, but I don't have like a horrific bomb usually. Well, not I'll be anymore. Like, I'll be like, ah, I got to figure out how to at least. And then I'll get off and be like, man, I bombed or I ate it. I felt like I was bombing, you know. Yeah. But, well, we learned how to do it just through so much reps, you know. Yeah. But there's been times where people have said next. Yeah. Or well, like yeah. say something funny. And I'm yeah. like, I'm trying, man. <laughs> like See, a lot how, of those. See, how it could really go downhill is when you don't say like, I'm trying. And you're like, but you don't understand. Yeah. That's how <laughs> you get. I it guess got, I should have doubled down. It turned. No, man. you don't fucking get no. <laughs> I need to understand material. by jokes. I think it was like something. Yeah. I did a joke about like the American flag or something. I was, I was like, ugh. No, you don't understand Bush. Like the reference, it was like going into these like, oh, geez. <laughs> silly, like dated, dated stuff now. But like, I, I don't even know what it was. But that is an epic getting booed off the stage story, and yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I, but we got it in. Yeah. Before we wrapped up. Yeah. I had it on the top. I can need. To, I need to. I need to do a lot in my life. But notes. <laughs> I always I've been doing this a year now. I'm like, make notes. Have have topics. And well, every you know, week, congrats, I'm just like, congrats, man. Ah. Yeah, I got to say congrats. Because we, uh, people even knew about it when we got off stage at the Irvine Improv. People were like, I know your podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is, man. This it's is, going, fans, it's going man. good. So thank you for listening, liking, and subscribing, and sharing, and all that shit. And remember, when you get a sticker from him, just tag that. Put it on, on the, your mama's booty. Put it on your mama's <laughs> booty. Ass. Put it on the car, on an ambulance. <laughs> put it on the back of a police car and say, fuck you, pig. <laughs> on a fire hydrant. And say, just kidding. Craig told me to do it. Go <laughs> kill him. Yeah, what if what if somebody gets arrested and they're literally like, was, they take that, that sound bite and they bring that with them to like court. It was jokes. I'm a comedian. <laughs> Satire. I was drinking cranberry juice. I was high off the green apple cranberry juice. (laughs) Fuck you and your mother, Judge. (laughs) Uh, Your mother's dead? Yeah, I still mean it. (laughs) Judge Judy. Oh, it's a weird ending. Yeah, so it weird got real. I, you know, I didn't. I, I should have wrapped it up. Why I did you do I this? Did, I also like left you on that he rather did. than laugh. I I yeah. got ADD, yeah. so yeah. like you start talking about Judge Judy, he just and booed I, me off. I just kind of like I just, yeah, I, I just kind of fell off. Your mom was dead. I don't mean it. That's the hardest loss <laughs> I anybody love Judge can Judy. go through. I'm sorry. I love Judge Judy. My nana used to watch her. She's dead. Well, thank you for having me on. <laughs> Listen, uh, anyways, to wrap it up about Judge Judy. Wrap uh, it up. All my grandparents are dead. I'm sad. Uh, <laughs> wrap it up. Thanks, Nick. Good guest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, that's it. Thank you so much. Once again, without you, I ain't got shit. So thanks for being my fans and liking and licking and subscribing to my shit. Share and tweet and retweet and toot and fart. And <laughs> go rub some booties, baby. This is Nick Novicki. I'll tag you in all posts. Follow him. He's I like a funny the way you fuck. said it before. Nick Novicki, motherfucker. No- Novacki. Nick Novacki. <laughs> Novacki. Novacki from Vamsa, Connecticut. Novacki. From New Haven, Connecticut. <laughs> Where he gets booed off the stage. (laughs) I love you all. Thanks for everything. Bye-bye.